Ooh, I just blew that sucker up. He kicked her right. butt. If the dangers of Monopoly seem far-fetched, consider the case of video games. We're continuing to maintain our retail sales plan at the $4 billion level. Four and a half million units in hardware, 45 million units in software. The SNES continues to have a unit sales projection through December of 2 million units with 6 million units of software projected. Through the, the men sitting in this room control the American video game industry. Nintendo, the most successful Japanese company in America by at least one measure. Nintendo controls 85% of the U.S. video game market. We can't underestimate the value of 60 million players. And Toys R Us, the world's largest toy retailer. They're meeting to plan for the all-important Christmas season at the annual Moore Electronics Show in Chicago, the most important trade show in the industry. Even in a business known for flash and glitz, the Nintendo exhibit is something special. A six million dollar display of pure market power. Nintendo Entertainment System is the frosting on the cake. To marketing vice president Peter Main, selling Nintendo is easy. They come, they try, they like and they buy and uh, it's a fun business. Especially fun if there's no competition. Companies that try to compete with Nintendo have an uphill fight. When you're the batter, these control moving yourself forward and backward. Dan Van Elderen is the president of Tengen, one of Nintendo's few competitors. Tengen can't get major retailers like Toys R Us to even carry its products. Van Elderen says Nintendo is the reason. In a matter of uh, three or four months, they were able to one by one contact all major retailers and convince them or intimidate them, or induce them not to handle Tengen product. Richard Frick is also trying to take on Nintendo. These factory workers in San Jose, California, are manufacturing video games for his company, American Video Entertainment. We can't match them dollar for dollar, but we can match them game for game. How many of the top 20 retail toy stores are your products in right now? None of the top 20 none? retail toy stores, none at all. Richard Frick says you can't buy his games in stores because retailers fear retaliation from Nintendo. The fear they have of not receiving future products uh, into their stores, which they very much count on for their... Fear that Nintendo will cut them off? Would cut them off or not ship them or undership them the products that they that they need the new hit products what's the response you get from Toys R Us well they, they try to be very careful about what they say they don't want to do anything to uh, get themselves in trouble and more than anything else they just say that we're not uh, a vendor that they can deal with at this point in time Toys R Us refused Frontline's request for an interview it's no surprise Toys R Us tries not to offend Nintendo Competitors claim Nintendo games represent 15% of Toys R Us revenues, but 25% of its profits. The tapes are kind of expensive. <laughs> but you know, kids want it, so you gotta get it for them. Parents may wonder why there's almost never a Nintendo sale. In six years, the price hasn't gone down at all. Not at all. Not at all. But every consumer product I can think of, these VCR CDs, the price always goes down. Oh, I believe that, that the manufacturing costs of these products have gone down significantly for Nintendo. They've just kept all that money instead of passing it on to the consumer. There's no reason for them to. There's no competition for them. Richard Frick says he can sell his games for less than $20 and still make a big profit. The Federal Trade Commission recently discovered how Nintendo keeps its prices high. Nintendo fixed prices with their dealers, wouldn't allow dealers to discount, and as a result, consumers that tried to comparison shop were just uh, wasting their time. The FTC found Nintendo guilty of price fixing. As part of the settlement, the company agreed to refund up to $25 million to consumers. It will pay the fine by offering $5 discounts for the purchase of future Nintendo products.
Introducing the next generation from Nintendo. It's a bit more exciting, a bit more challenging, a bit more graphic, a bit more colorful, a bit more realistic, a bit more lit, more secrets, a bit more enemies, a bit more friends, and a lot a more, more expensive. The new improved Nintendo system was introduced in the summer of 91. It cost twice as much as the old Nintendo. Now you're playing with power, superpower. Do you see that price coming down in the future where these games will not be that expensive? I'm not certain. Uh, there may be some prices below that. There, there well could be prices uh, above that. Nintendo of America denied Frontline's request to interview its president, Minoru Arakawa. I think his English is fine, but I think he's a little bit shy, and I think he would rather have uh, some of his other people uh, conduct the interviews. Howard Lincoln is senior vice president. We decided if we could make a video game system with quality games, that we would be successful. We took that gamble, and now I think it's appropriate for us to reap the rewards of that gamble. That is capitalism. Everything that's on the shelf at Nintendo, there is absolutely no competition to make the prices cheaper. And that is one of the reasons why Nintendo is afraid of us, is we have an alternative source of product that's completely legal, that plays well, and they don't want to have any competition at all. That's what a monopoly is all about. Nintendo doesn't have anything to do with the choice that uh, uh, retailers make as to what products they're going to carry. And there is absolutely no evidence that I'm aware of that Nintendo has kept any of these other companies out of the marketplace. While Nintendo insists they have done nothing wrong, Frontline has learned of several active federal and state investigations examining evidence that Nintendo has monopolized the video game industry. The message that's being sent is that if you want to play in the Nintendo world, you need to play by Nintendo's rules. And if you don't want to play by Nintendo's rules, it's going to be a very, very hard struggle. Ooh, you Got it. Yeah. I'm blowing up that place. Oh, what's that thing? Oh, this. Nintendo has captured the imagination of oh, America's nice. children. But critics claim its near total control of the market gives it the power to decide what products reach consumers and at what price. Got it. It's a matter of the American public having a choice as to what they can and can't do. Suppose Sony decided to take and make all of the Columbia Picture movies compatible only with Sony videotape players. There would be a situation very similar to what Nintendo's trying to do with us. When you start applying that to movies or books, magazines, TV shows, I think it's very clear how that can be really significant. Control of the video game market has given Nintendo the opportunity for immense profit. Its cash reserves alone exceed a billion and a half dollars. But money is not the only measure. The reason to be in high-tech industries these days is not to make a profit. The reason to be in high-tech industries is those are good jobs for your people. At Nintendo of America headquarters in Redmond, Washington, most jobs aren't exactly high-tech. There are no manufacturing jobs. All Nintendo games are made in Japan. The only work involves loading and unloading trucks. A nation that doesn't make anything is a nation that has a pretty poor spirit. Any problems yet? No, not yet. Seems, seems to be run pretty smooth. That's good. Which Nintendo of America doesn't produce games, but it does have a research and development group. <laughs> We're roasted him. <laughs> this is an R&D team at work. Only they don't really develop games; they play them. Yeah. Most of the R&D is done in Japan. So a second star now. Nintendo Gameplay, this is Sean. How can I help you? Mm -hmm. The largest number of workers are game counselors. They log 150,000 calls a week. Continue to the right until you get to this real big drop-off. That's when you want to use the umbrella. Looks like a, sort of like a balloon with a plus sign on it. You want to try to shoot for the head. Well, then you have to go and fight Astos. If you go down to the bottom right-hand corner, you can walk through the wall. You want to freeze him by hitting him in the head. Oh, okay. Okay, but then you want to spear him kind of mid midway through his body. All right. So it kind of cuts him in half, basically. All right. Okay? All right, cool. Is there anything else I can help you with? Not there, but yeah, thanks a lot. You got all that then? Yeah. Okay. All right, bye. Thanks for going.